Hi everyone! In the last few videos, we've explored techniques to add detail to the terrain using the erosion operator, transforming the original previous geometry landscape into a more naturalistic terrain. In this video, we'll continue where we left off and re-enable the fractal detail settings on the height fields used in the project. The fractal noise patterns will add a final level of detail to the terrain, contributing to its naturalistic look. Zoom into an area of the height field so we can get a closer view. Let's render a frame before applying the fractal detail. Remember to click the Copy This View to Current Render Camera button. To render an image, you can press F3 on your keyboard to bring up the Render View window. Then, press the Render button, or just use the Ctrl and R keyboard shortcut. Now select the Height Field Shader 02, go to the Fractal Detail tab, and enable Add Fractal Detail. Let's change the default values for the fractal amount, fractal scale, and fractal flow factor so we can better see what they do. Then, render another frame. When we compare the before and after images, we can see how the fractal detail contributes to the terrain. At this point, you could continue to adjust the settings to get the desired results. But let's say that you really only want to add the fractal detail to the deposition areas and leave the erosion areas as they were. To do this, we first need to create a mask to isolate the areas in which the effect will take place. Let's use a distribution shader's slope constraints as a mask to select the approximate deposition areas. And to help visualize this area, we'll take advantage of the Enable Test Color checkbox on a surface layer. Click on the Shaders button on the toolbar. Click the Add Layer button at the top of the node list and select Surface Layer. Enable the Test Color checkbox. The surface will turn pink. Click on the plus button to the right of the Mask by Shader field. Select Create New Shader, then Color Shader, and then Distribution Shader. Click on the plus button again and select Go to Distribution Shader. Click on the Slope Constraints tab. Then, enable the Limit Maximum Slope checkbox, change the Maximum Slope Angle value to 25, and the Maximum Slope Fuzzy Zone value to around 5. Alternatively, it's worth noting that we could have entered the Slope Limitation values directly under the Surface Layer's Slope Constraints tab. The pink areas indicate where the mask will take effect. Now that we know this, close the Distribution Shader dialog window, disable the Surface Shader, and return to the Terrain layout. We need to create two versions of the Volcano Height Field Shader, one with fractal detail and the other without. In the Node Network pane, select the Volcano Height Field Shader 02, then press Ctrl D to duplicate the shader. Connect the Volcano Height Field Load node to the Height Field input of the duplicated shader so that both shaders use the same height field. Double click on the duplicate shader to open it up. Then disable the fractal detail. Connect it into the workflow by dragging a line from the output of the Height Field Shader 01 to the duplicate's main input, then dragging a line from its output to the main input of Height Field Shader 02. Because we've modified the surface of the planet by adding an additional height field, we need to tell Terrigen to recalculate the normals in order for the slope constraints of the distribution shader's mask to work properly. Right click on the Height Field Shader node without the fractal detail and select Other Shader, then select Compute Normal. Now select the Height Field Shader with the Fractal Detail and apply the mask by clicking on the plus button to the right of the Mask by Shader field and selecting Assign Shader, then Distribution Shader. Now render a new image to see the combined results. With this video, we've reached an important benchmark in a visual effects production workflow. We've taken a previous scene from our favorite 3D software package and transformed the blocky placeholder geometry into a rough layout that shows the potential for the final terrain, yet can still be easily modified. As we move forward in this tutorial series, each topic will focus on one of Terrigen's powerful feature sets, such as skies, populations, and texturing that leads us towards completing the final version of our shot. We hope you've enjoyed this video and learned something new. Thanks for watching.